Hello, human-shaped friends. We are once again doing a time-lapse video. But this time around, it's a baby shark. Yes, I have already painted a baby shark. This baby shark is different, however, because it is a hammerhead shark. Potentially one of the most well-known sharks out there. Why? Because they're weird. They are strange to look at, and I enjoy that. I personally enjoyed their weird little mouths and their eyes that are far too far apart. I like it. It brings me joy. They're squishy and adorable. You know who else likes it? That's right, my partner who really likes sharks and whose birthday it was. This is once again another birthday gift. And in a very real way, it is hard to hide paintings. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about pros and cons of different paint mediums when you live in a teeny tiny apartment and you need to hide one. Obviously I went with acrylic paint because in my brain that is the most superior when it comes to its hide ability. After ooh, I'd say 10 maybe 15 minutes if you've added a lot of water for you know a nice wash you can wrap it in something and shove it in a drawer. Any drawer. Anywhere. <laughs> Again, it dries so quickly and it is so durable. Like, yes, when it hasn't fully settled or fully cured or however your brain would like to imagine paint does its thing, it can still take damage, but you can touch it almost immediately and not mess it up. What can you not do that with? oils. Oil paint, even when you are using a quick dry medium, still takes hours to days to dry. So you cannot quickly shove it in a drawer if, say, the person you're making it for comes home early and you gotta hide it real fast. And when you live in a teeny tiny apartment and you have a cat who really likes oils, you also can't just like put it up somewhere high because your cat will find it and rub on it and then you have to wash your cat. And Pippin does not like being washed and I do not like washing Pippin. So why not watercolors? After all, watercolors are traditionally just done on paper. It's fairly easy to just slip a piece of paper into something, a notebook, a drawer, tape it to the underside of a table. And that is true, but again, teeny tiny apartment and watercolors can take hours to fully settle into the paper and paper get this is really fragile <laughs> my cat is obsessed with oils plastic and paper and I wish I was joking about that I've literally been sitting there doing a thing like reading a book or working on a sketch, and my cat will come up and just start chewing on the paper. Which is not great when you're using expensive watercolor paper. Now I could go into the deep depths of the differences between watercolor papers. Just know you want a nice heavier body watercolor paper. I usually use like 140 pounds. It absorbs it better easier to de-wrinkle, yada da 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 Moving on, still paper. Still something my cat enjoys to bite. And even if it wasn't biteable, the way that I paint my watercolors is I will attach it to gator board. So that way it dries flat, because then it's easier to like frame, because it's less warped and wrinkly. And that takes days to fully dry. And it's so easy to knock things over in my teeny tiny apartment, and it is so hard to clean paper. <laughs> so, in my most humble of opinions, if you're going to be making someone a surprise painting, use acrylic paint or have an art studio. I don't have an art studio. I use acrylic paint, and this time around, I dare say I made a very cute teeny tiny shark. Let me know if next time you want me to talk more about the shark. <laughs> Until next time, have the day you want to have or the day you deserve. Really depends on you. Bye!